वसुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजनाशलाकया चक्षुरन्मिलस्मगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदास्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वेलकम बैक टू रत्नमाला सेशंस टुडे वी विल टेक श्लोक फ्रॉम भगवद गीता टुडे हैपेंस टू बी द लास्ट डे लास्ट संडे ऑफ दिस ईयर सो टुडे वी विल टेक वन श्लोक फ्रॉम द लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता टू श्लोकस एंड कंप्लीट आवर गीता श्लोकस एंड next session onwards we'll take bhagavatam and other shlokas so whole december we were doing uh, gita shlokas so let's begin yaidam yaidam paramam guhyam mad bhakte shobhidasyati bhaktim mai param kritva mame vaishyasya samshayah na cha tasmay manushyeshu kaschin me priyakrittamah भविता न च मे तस्मा अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि यदम परम गुह्यम यदम परम गुह्यम यदम परम गुह्यम यदम परम गुह्यम वैष्णवी मद्भक्ते स्वभिदास्यति मद्भक्ते स्वभ संशय दिव्य कृष्ण यदम परम गुह्यम मद्भक्तेश्वी संशय मनुष्य परशुरा प्रभु कश्चि मे प्रियम 
कश्चिन मे प्रिय कृतम कश्चिन मे प्रिय कृतम कश्चिन मे प्रिय कृतम कश्चिन मे प्रिय कृतम भविता न चे तस्म भविता न चे तस्म भविता न चे तस्म भविता न चे तस्म ओके नेक्स्ट अन्य परतरो भुवि ओके फुल श्लोक वी विल रिसाइट नैमिषा न च तस्मान मनुष्येशु न च तस्मान मनुष्येशु कश्चिन मे प्रियकृतमह कश्चिन मे प्रियकृतमह भविता न च मे तस्माद भविता न भविता न च मे तस्माद अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि थैंक यू कीर्तिदा यस प्रभु जी हम रिसाइट न च तस्मान मनुष्येशु न च तस्मान मनुष्येशु कच्छिद मे प्रिय कृतम न भविता न च मे तस्मादेन प्रियतरो भुवि अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि थैंक यू नीलम माता जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धनोत्तु नाम न च तस्मान मनुष्येशु कच्छिन मे प्रिय कृतम भविता न च मे तस्माद अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि हरे कृष्ण न च तस्मान मनुष्येशु कच्छिन मे प्रिय कृतम भविता न च मे तस्माद अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि राघवेंद्र प्रभु हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी मनुष्येशु कश्चिन मे प्रिय कृतम भविता न च मे तस्मा अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दंड आफ्टर डिस्क्राइबिंग एंटर भगवदगीता टू अर्जुन अर्जुन कृष्ण इज स्पीकिंग दीज टू श्लोका दिस श्लोका कम इवन आफ्टर सर्वधर्मा परित्यज एंड ऑल द कंक्लूसिव टीचिंग सर गिवेन बै कृष्ण कृष्ण स्पीक्स Uh, whom should we speak bhagavad gita to krishna explained bhagavad gita to arjuna arjuna or whoever is reading bhagavad gita they can also explain bhagavad gita to others but while speaking bhagavad gita to others we should have something in mind okay that's what krishna is revealing in these two shlokas when who is a qualified and bona fide candidate to receive the receive the teachings of bhagavad gita and what is the glory and fortune of a teacher of bhagavad gita so these two things krishna will reveal in these two shlokas let's see the meaning yeidam paramam guhyam idam means this paramam guhyam means supreme secret knowledge confidential knowledge this bhagavad gita that i have spoken to you which is extremely confidential and secret knowledge mad bhakteshu <laughs> abhidasyati one who describes and one explains this to my devotees krishna clearly said mad bhakteshu to my devotees abhidhasyati one who explains uh, bhaktim mai param krutva bhaktim means devotional service mai unto krishna param krutva means great devotional service pure devotional service is guaranteed by explaining bhagavad gita to others you will become a great devotee okay then mame vaishyasi asamshaya at the end you will also go to uh, the supreme lord krishna you will come back to me mam eva aishyati asamshaya there is no doubt so you got the meaning of the shloka one who explains this confidential knowledge of bhagavad gita to others to the devotees of krishna will go to krishna will become a nice devotee of krishna and he will also reach krishna so that's the fortune of a teacher of bhagavad gita 
Now we all have learned Bhagavad Gita to some degree. We can also make an attempt to explain Bhagavad Gita to our friends and other devotees. But there is an issue here. <laughs> okay, let's see the next sloka. Oh, this is done. Okay, I don't have it here. Hmm. Idam Paramam Guhim. Okay, we didn't uh, read the first Idam Paramam Guhim meaning. Give me one second, I will open that meaning also. Hmm. So Krishna is saying, Ya idam paramam guhyam. Okay, just a minute. There is some confusion. Ah, this one. Hmm. Nacha tasman manushyeshu kaschin me priyakrittamaha. Nacha tasman means there is no other servant in this entire world. Uh, who is as dear to me as a teacher of Bhagavad Gita? Right? Kaschin me Priyakrittamaha. Priyakrittamaha means the best of all those people who are dear to Krishna. So there is no one in this entire world who is as dear to Krishna as a person who explains Bhagavad Gita to others. Bhavita Nachame Tasmar. Even in future also, no one can become as dear to Krishna as a person who teaches Bhagavad Gita. Anya Haparataro Bhavi. No one is more dear. So in these two shlokas, Krishna is revealing to us that if you teach Bhagavad Gita to the devotees of Krishna, then you can become dear to Krishna and you can also go to Krishna, you will also become a nice devotee. But why Krishna is saying Madhbhakteshu Abhidasyati to my devotees only? Can't we discuss Bhagavad Gita to some new people, people who are not yet devotees of Krishna? So the answer is that when you teach Bhagavad Gita to people who do not value it, then they can become more offensive. So there are two kinds of people whom a teacher of Bhagavad Gita might meet. One, innocent people, ignorant people. Second, arrogant people. If you teach Bhagavad Gita to innocent people, although they are not devotees, still by hearing Bhagavad Gita from you, they will become devotees of Krishna. But if one teaches Bhagavad Gita to arrogant people, proud people, right, who do not value it, they can become more offensive. They are too atheistic, they are too materialistic, they don't value the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and also uh, they may say that, oh, this Krishna is imaginary, this Ram is imaginary, there is no God, universe is existing on its own. Uh, so they have hundreds and thousands of such materialistic, atheistic conceptions. If you teach Bhagavad Gita to them, what happens, what can happen is, they can become more atheistic, more uh, materialistic, okay, more offensive towards the Lord. So that's why Krishna says that explain this Bhagavad Gita to my devotees only. And even in the offenses to the holy name of Krishna, you know, 10 offenses to the holy name of Krishna that devotees keep reciting early in the morning. Uh, one of the offenses is that one should not teach the glories of the chanting of the holy names of Krishna to people who are not having faith. Okay, But uh, devotees are so compassionate that they even take risk. They take little risk. Unless uh, you start teaching Gita or speaking the glories of the holy name to people, how will you understand whether they will take it or not? So Prabhupada writes that, yes, it's, it's mentioned in the Shastras that we should not give this confidential knowledge, confidential teachings to people who are not qualified. And even at the end of teachings of Lord Kapila also, um, there are some um, uh, sections there are some shlokas that Kapila, goes, Kapila says that uh, one should not give these teachings to people who are, do not have faith. Okay, Who is a bona fide candidate to receive the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, knowledge of Bhagavatam. So right within Bhagavatam, it is Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that idam tute guhyatamam pravakshyami anasuyave. 
You remember this shloka from the ninth chapter, first shloka. Krishna told Arjuna, Arjuna, I am giving you this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita because you are anasuyave. You have no envy in your heart. So, non-envious devotees uh, can easily accept the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and make an attempt to apply the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and perfect their lives. But those who, uh, those who are filled with envy in their hearts, they cannot accept the teachings. So, therefore, there should be a restriction. However, uh, devotees are very merciful that they take little risk and start speaking Bhagavad Gita to whomever they meet as much as possible. But if the opposition is too strong, if the other people uh, whom we are teaching Bhagavad Gita to are like too offensive, uh, too materialistic, too atheistic and when you are speaking something from the Gita that Krishna spoke, they start blaspheming Krishna even more then we should we should try restricting. <laughs> okay. So there are three kinds of devotees. Kanishta, Madhyama, Uttama. So Madhyama Adhikari are a devotee who is like uh, mediumly advanced in bhakti. Such a devotee will deal with people in four different ways. Prema, Maitri, Kripa, Upeksha. Prema means they love the Lord. Such devotees love the Lord. Maitri means they make friendship with other devotees. Kripa means they are very compassionate and merciful towards innocent people. They try to teach them about bhakti. Upeksha means they are indifferent or they stay away from envious people. So, in our attempts to teach Bhagavad Gita to different people, yes, we should liberally distribute the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. At the same time, if we find a candidate who is not favorable to these teachings, who are becoming more and more atheistic and offensive because of we teaching them Bhagavad Gita, we may kind of restrain, right? We may not venture into that direction. And different people have different capacities to, uh, to inspire uh, people into spiritual life. So you understand your capacity and accordingly you, you teach uh, Bhagavad Gita to different kinds of audiences. So yes, teaching Bhagavad Gita is great, it's glorious. By teaching Bhagavad Gita to others, we become dear to Krishna, we develop devotion, we increase our devotion and we can go back to Krishna also. But uh, we should also understand what is my capacity to teach Bhagavad Gita to others. If I teach uh, arrogant people, they may become even more arrogant. So I may not attempt to do so without having sufficient spiritual purity. For example, Prabhupada went to the West and he tried to uh, speak Bhagavad Gita to the people there. So, they were innocent. Many people who came in connection with uh, Prabhupada in the initial days, uh, they were quite uh, innocent and they were accepting. They didn't know, so they were accepting. Uh, but there were some people who opposed Prabhupada. So, Prabhupada focused on those people who are very favorable to uh, Krishna consciousness who were very respectful in receiving. There were some issues and Prabhupada tried, tried, tried and they, they could accept and they became devotees. But initially there was some opposition, right? So when people are too much opposing uh, and, uh, and we are trying to push our teachings upon them only, <laughs> our sacred teachings upon them, then what could happen is they may offend, they may offend even more and they will become affected with Vaishnava Aparad and Krishna Aparad. Okay. So that's what Krishna is saying. Mad Bhakti Shabhidasati teach Bhagavad Gita to people who value it. Right? Then there is value. So we should be compassionate, but our compassionate action should also be accompanied with compassionate uh, emotion, compassionate disposition. Right? The action itself, teaching Bhagavad Gita is uh, an action of compassion, but one should not do it in a mood of um, advertising one's own scholarship. So again, Krishna is also saying that when you are teaching Bhagavad Gita to others, that should be done out of compassionate spirit with a well-wishing heart. So let us try to bring these people closer to the Lord. So that should be the intention. So exhibition of uh, uh, one's knowledge should not be the intention. Okay, so that is another aspect when we have to remember while teaching Bhagavad Gita.
right? So when we are distributing knowledge to others, you don't, uh, your knowledge is not decreased, it is enhanced. So when you have uh, 10 laddus, you distribute these 10 laddus to 10 people, you have zero in your hand. But when you know 10 slokas, and you explain these 10 shlokas to 10 people, your own understanding of these 10 shlokas will increase. So knowledge is one thing that when distributed to others liberally, our own realization will increase. That knowledge will convert into realization. So there are so many benefits of teaching. right? But we should understand the right candidates. Uh, who are the right candidates uh, to teach? So distribution of knowledge doesn't decrease knowledge. But when it is done with compassion, it converts that knowledge into a realization. And when we give to others what we have received, we also appreciate what we are given. So while teaching Bhagavad Gita to others, you yourself will appreciate the teachings in a much deeper manner. Okay. Just imagine you are hearing one shloka. Like Ratnamala, last one year we have been discussing so many shlokas. So by hearing, you appreciate some shloka. Okay, you understand it to some degree. But when you are explaining that shloka to others along with meaning, you understand it even more better. You go much deeper. Thus, our own devotion will be enhanced by distributing this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to others. Okay, That's why uh, Krishna says, Bhaktim Mayu Param Kritva. One will increase in one's own devotion to the Lord. Okay, So, Gita wisdom is like life-saving medicine. So, there should be a discrimination in giving that medicine. At the same time, there should be eagerness. So, I just mentioned this. Yeah. So, Gita wisdom is like life-saving medicine. But uh, uh, this medicine is also like nectar. So, it cures the disease of material attraction. At the same time, it is very tasty. Okay. Can you imagine you are suffering with some sickness and the doctor gave you some medicine and sometimes medicines are bitter, but if the medicine is also sweet and the doctor also says that uh, this medicine you can take as much quantity as you possible, as possible. Generally, it's like one pill or two pills in, the, in a day, uh, but uh, doctor says you take 10 pills, no issue. And it's very tasty also. Bhagavad Gita is like that. Bhagavatam is like that. All our scriptures are like that. Okay, But when it is uh, very tasty, we tend to take more and uh, uh, a tasty, tasty items when taken more, it will cause indigestion. Okay, But Bhagavad Gita is not like that. There is no indigestion. Okay, Bhagavatam is not like that. There is no indigestion. You will become more and more uh, you know, attracted towards Krishna. So like that, Bhagavad Gita is a life-saving, tasty medicine. We can distribute to as many people as want, they want. But there are some people who may accept medicine and then throw it away. I will not take it. So we should be very careful about them. Throwing it away, we will not lose anything, but they will lose something. They will become offensive to the Lord. So that's why we should not become too, uh, uh, too eager or too much of hankering. We should not, we need not show so much of hankering to distribute Gita knowledge to anybody and everybody that we see. Okay, When someone is not favorable, find a person who is more favorable. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tried to preach in the Bengal area, but somehow people were not very favorable. He came to South India and started preaching there. Prabhupada initially wanted to spread Krishna consciousness and establish his Khan in, in India. 40 years he struggled, but somehow many people were not very favorable. So he went to the West and he started there. So similarly, when you're distributing books, this is Gita Marathon, you may be distributing Bhagavad Gita's to people. So you go to one person, he's arguing, he is not uh, favorable. Instead of spending your one hour or two hours to convince that person somehow to take Bhagavad Gita, use that one or two hours to go to hundred different people. They may accept. Tap the innocent people, tap the people who are very favorable. That some people, however much you try to convince them, they may not be able to take it. So yes, by teaching Bhagavad Gita, we enhance our own devotion. We come closer to Krishna. We go back to Krishna. Uh, but Krishna also said, Man bhakteshu abhidrashyati. So Krishna did not mean to restrict this knowledge, but Krishna meant to uh, inspire us to give this knowledge to people who value it. Okay. So if you help a person to 
to uh, come closer to krishna we are helping our own selves in becoming closer to krishna helping one person may not change the entire world but at least helping that one person will change his world or her world isn't it so their world will be changed so we should be focusing on that we should be um, we should not uh, feel that i will conquer the whole world by teaching bhagavad gita yes bhagavad gita should be spread world worldwide but because this world is filled with more materialistic people than spiritually inclined people devotees are always a minority mm-hmm. especially in kali yuga devotees are a minority uh, but we'll try to increase increase mm, our uh, our uh, mm, uh, in enthusiasm to teach bhagavad gita to as many people as possible but we should not feel discouraged when some people are not accepting it so we may not try in that direction we may try in a different direction okay so the gita message uh, is filled with love just sometime back krishna said uh, what was that sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshayishyami mascha okay so krishna said that if you surrender unto me the final message of bhagavad gita is if you surrender unto krishna he will relieve you from all sinful reactions okay so now this topic of surrender to krishna is such a very elevated topic elevated activity that relieves everyone from all sinful reactions and nobody will go to hell only so thus we should put our full energy to distribute this message of bhagavad gita distribute the conclusion of bhagavad gita essence of bhagavad gita with the surrender to krishna and inspire people to surrender to krishna as much as possible as many people as possible okay but krishna's point is mad bhakteshu abhidasyati so this knowledge has to be treasured uh, by concealing it from those people who do not value it but sharing with those people who value it so we need to explore who is valuing it who is valuing it we should not feel discouraged okay this person is not valuing it there is no market for bhagavad gita no go somewhere else they will value it they will value it like that every single person who is benefited by the knowledge of bhagavad gita should go out and search for people who can value this message and try to distribute this message to as many people as possible i hope this is not too confusing okay krishna is putting some kind of restriction okay mad bhakteshu abhidasyati at the same time he is saying just distribute you will become dear to me okay there is no person as dear to me as a person who teaches bhagavad gita to people so krishna is encouraging us to preach at the same time cautioning us that while preaching you will find some inimical people envious people don't try to push them so much that become they they become even more envious okay try to help them uh, in a more uh, digestible way acceptable way so our our spreading the message of bhagavad gita or inspiring people to come to krishna consciousness should be uh, should not be um, in a hard hitting way or pushing hey you are very materialistic you are very atheistic you have to take this bhagavad gita otherwise you will go to hell it may be truth right you may be thinking that it is truth it may be truth also but that does not mean you present the truth in a very hard hitting way that people become really uh, scared and run away <laughs> in your first preaching program only you can't just say you can't just say uh, the 26th chapter of 5th canto of bhagavatam what is there in it hellish planets description of hellish planets don't begin with describing hellish planets speak something that they can digest speak something that they can accept uh, and uh, relate with uh, initially that's what preaching is in the first canto of bhagavatam fourth chapter first purport um, prabhupad writes a beautiful point what is personal realization when you are teaching scriptures to people we should preserve the essence of the scriptures we should uh, preserve we should transmit the conclusive essential message of the scriptures but in a more interesting manner in a more acceptable manner in a more digestible manner okay what you be what you are speaking must be truth but the truth has to be conveyed in a way that uh, is relatable and acceptable to people so that's what a teacher of bhagavad gita um, definitely should have knowledge of bhagavad gita but just knowledge of bhagavad gita is not sufficient 
a teacher of bhagavad gita should also know uh, the right and appropriate manner of presenting gita to different kinds of audiences you may speak the truth you may give remedy to some person if the person doesn't have the digestive capacity he will uh, become a victim of uh, you know indigestion more the person who has poor digestion eats uh, or drinks you know one one liter of rabdi what will happen to him <laughs> right his digestion digestive system will be more corrupted right uh, so we need to give things to people in a more digestible manner okay rabdi they cannot digest okay give something simpler that they can digest okay so some maybe you give direct milk only maybe little diluted milk you give okay so not diluted milk but dilution uh, don't take it in a different way <laughs> we should not dil- dilute the um, message of bhagavad gita we can uh, tone it down and explain it in a very simple terms so that they can accept it okay so in this way when we are very careful and thoughtful in presenting the message of bhagavad gita to people then we can inspire more people to accept the teachings of bhagavad gita so however much you try to simplify uh you may find some people who are too inimical to they cannot accept they are too challenging okay fine no problem don't spend your time on that there may be some more devotees who are more mature than us who are more knowledgeable than us they can deal with them but you understand your capacity you understand what kind of audience you can uh, inspire and then try, try to you know explain bhagavad gita to them and by doing so your devotion will increase your attraction towards krishna will increase and they will also come closer to krishna so yes teaching of bhagavad gita is very very uh, important service uh, by which we can come closer to krishna we can take ten other people also with us but that has to be done with uh, due diligence uh, with intelligence with with well thought out uh, you know strategy right so that as you bring more and more people uh, closer to krishna's lotus feet thus we will also come closer to krishna's lotus feet i hope this is clear so with this we'll conclude our gita ratnamala sessions for this year okay so next we will next year we will start with some other shlokas thank you very much for your wonderful participation more devotees can recite hari krishna i'll show the shlokas Yeidam paramam guhyam Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Yeidam paramam guhyam Madbhakte shvabhidasyati Madbhakte shvabhidasyati Yes what is taken to say Yeidam paramam guhyam Madbhakte shvabhidasyati Bhakti mai param kritva Mame Mame vaishyatya samshaya न च तस्मानुष्यु कश्चिन मे प्रियतम भविता न मे तस्मा प्रियतरो भुवि थैंक यू प्रभु जी दानत प्रणाम थैंक यू बुली रे हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी य इदम परमम गुह्यम मद्भक्तेषु अभिदास्यति भक्तिं मयि परम कृत्वा माम ए वैष्यति असंशया न च तस्मान मनुष्येषु कश्चिन मे प्रियकृत्तम भविता न च मे तस्माद अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि धन्यवाद प्रणाम शुभ प्रसन्न प्रभु जी धन्यवाद मैदम परमम गुह्यम मद्भक्ते सबिदास्यति भक्तिं मयि परां कृत्वा मामे वैषत्य संशयः मयि परां कृत्वा मामे वैश्यत्य संशयः अन्यः प्रियतरो भुवि 
थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद यदम परम गुह्यम मद्भक्ते स्वादास्यति भक्ति मयि परम कृत्वा मामे वैश्यति असंशय न च तस्मान् मनुष्येषु कश्चिन् मे प्रिय कृतम भवितना च मे तस्माद् अन्य प्रियतरो भुवि हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु यदम परम गुह्यम मद्भक्ति